Now we've had which of course is more Chapter 2, verses 6 to 11. Um, actually, the text begins because you see, Paul, before we get into the text, maybe it's, Paul loves this uh, Philippian community, but they're having their problems. There's a um, uh, division among them, and it concerns him. And so, He's writing to them. So, and, and later on in the letter, if you recall, he's, he says, Evodia and Sinduki, get along, two of the women leaders, and you, the bishop, I guess, um, help these women who have served the Lord so well, you know, uh, uh, be reconciled. It's in this context, then, of the unity of the church, that we set forth for us how to sacrifice ourselves for the sake of the unity of the church. Jesus gives up all his divine prerogatives and dies a slave's death. Why? To save us. And so we have this hymn. It's probably a hymn. Um, it, 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 uh, it is more rhythm rhythmical. Os en morfita yu i parkon, os uk a pargon i isate, to win i isate. It's kind of rhythmical. You could imagine that this is Paul either composing a hymn, or perhaps more likely, quoting a hymn. Remember this hymn we sing? What does it say about the humility of Jesus? Remember it! Because this is where Jesus is, at the heart of the church, fixed in the act of love in which he died. That act of total abandonment, humility, self-offering for our sake. He's fixed in that act of love forever. And so, this is why I want to recall this to you. So it says then, you see, uh, so have this uh, mind in you. Huh? Think among yourselves as in Christ Jesus, which probably means as Christ Jesus thinks, who uh, was in the form of God. Morphe there means not that he looked like God, but he was in the nature of God. You see, because then it says he took on the form of a slave. Well, he didn't look like a slave. He was one. So the Morphe, Tuteu, means he's in the nature of God. Okay, You have to translate it, as the text says, in the form of God. But it means... See, because the next line did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped at. He doesn't have to grasp it. He has it. Adam fell trying to be like God. Jesus doesn't have to try to be like God. He is God. And so that's what Paul is trying to tell us here. Um, I don't know how I mixed up my text here, but just give me a second and I'll be with you. There it is. I just have one page blank. Uh, all right. Uh, and so he was in appearance found osanthropos as a man. And now it starts. He humbled himself, becoming obedient unto death. And not just unto death, death on a cross. Cicero already had called this exec manner of execution Mors crudelissima, the cr a most cruel death, reserved for uh, revolutionaries and runaway slaves. You're naked on a cross just outside the city, nailed there, hanging by your own weight. And as you sink, you cut off the the diaphragm. You can't breathe. So then, with nails in your feet, you raise yourself up so you can breathe. That doesn't, you know. And then you collapse again. And then you do, till finally you die. And you die through asphyxiation. You just can no longer support yourself. Which is a horrible way, horrible way to die. It's a frightening way to die. Not being able to breathe. 
and in this pain. That's why he says, you see, uh, that unto death, death on a cross, you see. Uh, this tremendously humiliating, painful death. That's how much he loves us, you see. Therefore, Dio, because of this, God raised him up. And the word there is a word that's been used a lot in John. Uh, Ipsun. Here is Iper Ipsun. Super raised him up. The three passion predictions in John all uh, have to do with this word. I think I pointed this out last week. Uh, our Lord is probably using the Aramaic word, which is used for both be exalted and crucified. It's the same word. So it's a very perfect word for what our Lord. He is exalted, isn't he? You want to see how great God is? Look at a cross. That's how much he loves us. That's how he showed his greatness. He could have come, my gosh, and lightning and thunder and shaken the whole world or taken the whole world and thrown it out into the outer universe. But he didn't. He came humbling himself, becoming obedient to the Father. This is the Father's plan, which means it's his plan. But as Maximus tells us, we're saved by this human decision of a divine person. As a divine person, he wills humanly to go through with this. And so he does, you see. Uh, he was obedient unto death, death on a cross. Therefore, you see, because of this, God raised him up and graced him, literally, with the name which is above every name. What is the name which is above every name? Adonai. That's the name above every name. There's a powerful text. Oh, here it is. Just, I should have had this ready. I didn't think of it till this moment. In Isaiah 45, 24. This is that is what this text is alluding to right now. My goodness. Must be the Holy Spirit helping me out. I open right up to 45. Um, By my own self, I swear it. What comes from my mouth is truth. This is God speaking. A word irrevocable. Before me, every knee shall bow, bend. By me, every tongue shall swear, saying, From Adonai alone come victory and strength. Well, those are the words in this hymn. If it is, it probably is a hymn that Paul is quoting, you see. And so it says, you see, he gave him the name above every name. What is the name above every name? Yahweh. He didn't give it to him, it's his, but he revealed it. Okay? So that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. This is what God is saying right here. By my own self I swear it, what comes from my mouth is truth, a word irrevocable, before me every knee shall bend, by me every tongue shall swear. And he's saying, this applies to Jesus. You see? Uh, every tongue shall swear. Uh, and uh, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Kyrios. Jesus Christ is divine. He's Lord. Kyrios is the way that the Greek Bible translates Yahweh. Over, I mean, that's the standard way. In the Hebrew Bible, they put the, the, the um, consonants for the word Yahweh, but the vowels are for Adonai. So, it does, it's, it's a non-word. That's where the Jehovah Witnesses got Jehovah. It's not a word. It's Yahweh with the vowels from Adonai. So that when you're reading the Hebrew text, you come across that, you say Adonai. You don't say it. But the word, see, by me every tongue shall swear. Only in Adonai. Only in Yahweh. Now, he gives that word. Well, can the Father give away something? that? No. I mean, he, he can't make somebody God. This son, 
Jesus hanging on the cross is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. This is who he is. And that's why, you see now, in his humanity, he is Kyrios. We say this all the time, the Lord Jesus, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Let's stop once in a while. You see, we don't mean like he's Lord Fontaroy or somebody. We mean he's he's Adonai. You see? Every tongue confess. You see, that 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 Kyrios, he was Christos. Jesus Christ is Kyrios, and that confessio is to the glory of God the Father. It exalts God the Father. This plan hidden in the depth of the Trinity, brought about by the Trinity, it glorifies the Father, who is the Principium Deitatis, even though they're all equal and equally eternal. But this plan, you see, to save us by the humility, by the act of love in which Jesus died. Because, as I've mentioned frequently, uh, what does Jesus give to God, the Father, that makes up for all the sin of the world? Oh, how many were billions of people were sinning every day? Some horridly. Killing other people, raping other people, murdering in the womb? By the millions. You see? And he made all that up to be a front to God, the lack of love, the lack of trust to God the Father. You see, that love in which he died made reparation for all our sin. It wasn't the pain, the pain was part of it, but the what made reparation was the depth and purity and humility of the act of love on the part of the Son of God made man. And therefore, you see, as it says here, you see, uh, God raised him up and graced him, bestowed on him the name above every name. We just read what that name is. It's, this is all alluding to Isaiah 45, 24 and following. Okay? Um, so that at the name of Jesus, which is, what's the name of Jesus? Kyrios. You see? Lord. Every knee bow, over the heavens, on the earth, and so forth, and under the earth, which as I, comes right from this text, right? As I've already pointed out to you. Um, you see? Um, to him shall come a shame, all who raged against him. By me every tongue shall swear, saying, From Adonai alone come victory and strength. And so he bestowed on him the name above every name, that is, the reality of Yahweh suffuses your whole humanity, my blessed son. You will bear those wounds, those trophies of your love through all eternity in your hands and feet. But you will be radiant and beautiful and you will be worshipped by all the heavenly powers because you are God and they know it. And this is revealed, how? In the act of love in which you die. That's what God is like. God is incomprehensible. That's perfectly true. His power, his might, the ability to create that goes beyond us. But what makes him incomprehensible is God is love. And we're so dumb. We're working for his angle. And he has no angle. God is love. And that's why, you see, uh, I remember one of my professors and I'll end with this, Father Leone it was, said, well, people say, if you want to see the meaning of sin, look at the cross. No. If you want to see the meaning of sin, look at hell. You see the cross, you see love. 